So today we have some venom extractions from coastal taipans. This is Oxyuranus scutellatus scutellatus. There is one other subspecies of this taipan, which is the one in uh, Papua New Guinea, the Papuan taipan. Uh, the subspecies of those is Cani. And uh, these guys are found uh, in the coastal regions of Australia, specifically the northeastern coastal areas, and then also along the coast in the northern part of the Northern Territory and Western Australia. And we just have a few of these guys. We have a, a request for some venom. Um, I don't know what the use of the venom is. We haven't been told that. And so uh, you can see that as we do with some other snakes, we're using a tubing technique on these guys. And the reason we like to use the tube is that it prevents the snake from being able to easily uh, twist and thrash, which gives uh, the snake um, some protection and also gives Jim some protection. So that's why we like to use that technique. And taipans have quite the reputation for being uh, really uh, dangerous snakes and uh, for acting really wild and crazy and of course we don't really want them to act wild and crazy that is one reason for using the tube as opposed to just trying to immediately pin them uh, and we also always believe in using gentle handling techniques to manipulate the animals so that they uh, stay as calm as possible and you can see this one here is slightly uncooperative uncooperative for a minute uh, but eventually he decides that he can go on into the tube. Um, taipans are also well known because uh, prior to the introduction of antivenom for them uh, in the 1950s in Australia, uh, their bite was considered 100% fatal. And whether or not that's you know, completely true or if there were some unreported bites where the people survived, um, you know, probably up for debate, but in any case, they are considered a highly venomous snake. A lot of people, I think, outside of Australia think that Australian snakes are only neurotoxic, but that's not true. This snake does have a high neurotoxin, but can also cause coagulopathy, which is uh, difficulties with the blood clotting and other issues as well. So it's really uh, an oversimplification to say that they're entirely neurotoxic. And this is the last snake that we have here. Um, you can see he's also kind of looking the other way. I think this is the largest one that we extracted from. Um, but again, he's, he's pretty calm. You can see him just kind of checking out the tube and Jim's being really patient. And then once he starts to go in there, we kind of, you know, encourage him to keep going. And then he's in the tube. And this one, I tried to get a little bit head on so you could kind of see the snake in the tube. And then unfortunately he kind of got a little wiggly, so you can't see it for very long, but here he is coming out of the tube. And just a word about the hook that we use. Um, that's just a standard snake hook and we've used some vet wrap around the handle, which you can kind of see since it was in an inadvertently close to the camera there. And that just makes sure that the um, shaft of the hook is, first of all, has a little grip and second of all is padded so that we don't hurt the snake. And you'll notice that on the mat there as well, that's also padding so that uh, you know, it kind of can look like their faces are being a little squished, um, but they're not. They're just uh, malleable and able to kind of move around a whole lot. And I get, there you can see Jim's fingers kind of going with the uh, contractions of the snake's venom glands as he uh, decided to do that. And here's the venom that we collected. You can see it's not yellow like many snakes. And uh, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our videos, and have a great day.